In today's video, we'll build an automation that finds prospects using only free tools. There are other methods to get leads like Appify, Apollo, Zoom Info, but these are all paid tools or they have some serious limitations. With this workflow, you can get leads without paying a single penny. We'll find job advertisements relevant to your niche, locate the advertiser's LinkedIn pages and scrape them. We'll extract company data from LinkedIn and collect the new prospect data in an email. Ready to get leads? This is AI Agents A to Z. As a first step, we are going to find a job board, which is easy to scrape. We selected Remotive. They don't really have any protection against scraping. And they also have separate RSS feeds for each industry. Job boards like Remotive are actually great sources for prospects because they can signal strong sales intent. And if a company is hiring, it signifies that they have a hiring budget and it's likely that they have a department in that industry. For example, if a company is hiring for a DevOps engineer, they're most likely using a CI CD solution as well. So there's also a chance that the company could buy DevOps services from you if you have a great offering. Now that we have our job board, let's start to build the workflow. We'll begin with an edit fields node so that we can set our Google keys for the API and custom search. If you're not sure how to set these up, check out our video on deep research using Google search linked in the description below. Let's set up our RSS read node. With this, we're gonna download the content from Remotive, focusing particularly on listings for marketing jobs. Now from the content, we can filter out a single item to work with, just one single job posting. You can see that we've actually got 50 different items, but for demo purposes of this video, we're only going to use one. So you can see we've got one item here, the listing for a product marketer. Now with an HTTP request node, we can actually request the page from Remotive, and this will allow us to scrape the posting to get all of the HTML content. Then let's use an HTML node, and now we can extract more details. So the first thing I'll extract is the info, these are the short details on what the role is. And then we'll also extract the job ad. So these are the full details of the position, everything else that you see on this page. And now let's use a code block and we can extract the location data of the position from the data we just pulled under the info key. Now, why did we get the location data? Well, this actually helps us locate the company page on LinkedIn so that we can get their LinkedIn company page content, which we'll do now. Let's start with an HTTP request. And with this, we're gonna be looking for the advertiser's LinkedIn company page. Just as a note, this is an x-ray search, which is a Google search for a particular website. So in this case, we're gonna do an x-ray search on LinkedIn company pages. So I've been putting in my API key, my custom search key, and now the query. And here in this expression, you can see we're going to use the name of the company and also the location in order to search the site. And as you can see, we found the right company page for low fuse. Now let's edit these fields. We're going to extract the LinkedIn URL, which is the company's LinkedIn page. And we'll also extract the description of the page from the search we just did. Now, if we test, you can see both of those fields in the output. And then we can use an HTTP request. And this is how we'll actually scrape LinkedIn. So I'll set up some custom headers. First thing I'll set up is the user agent. And this is important because it's going to pretend that it's Chrome. And then I'll also use a referrer google.com. And this is going to pretend that we are clicking from a browser and we've clicked the link or the search results from Google. Test it out and it's returned our LinkedIn data. All right, data processing time. Let's create an extract HTML content node and we're gonna get the different blocks one by one. So the first block we're gonna get is the about us and we are extracting the HTML content. The second part is going to be the locations, the different offices these companies have. I'm going to add the key locations. 
This is the CSS selector I'm going to use to target it, and we are going to extract the HTML content. Next one is going to be all the available employees on the re-LinkedIn call. Let's add a key and the CSS selector. And we, again, want to extract the HTML so we can work with it. Let's get all the news that the company shared on LinkedIn. It's going to go under the key called updates. Let's add the CSS selector and we want an HTML. Let's get the information card from the top. I'm going to call the key info and here's the CSS selector that will select the right div and we're going to extract an HTML. We also want to find all the products the company shared on LinkedIn. Let's see how it looks. It's an empty array, so apparently this company does not have any products shared on LinkedIn. I'm also interested if they shared their crunch base on LinkedIn. Really depends on if there's a matching data on LinkedIn. So I'm going to go for an attribute here to try to extract the href attribute of this anchor. So apparently Crunchbase is not available for this particular LinkedIn page, but don't worry. That's not the case for every single one. As a last one, I want to also grab all the affiliated pages they might have. This also could be empty, but uh, let's see if we are lucky. Unfortunately, the affiliate pages for this particular company is also empty. We've extracted all the sections of the company page, and now we'll extract the data within each section one by one. I'm going to extract information from the information block. Let's use an HTML extract content node. We are going to target the name attribute. Everything comes from the info field from the previous node. And this is going to be the H1 field. Let's see if I found it. There we are. And then we also want to find a category. So the category is going to be the H2. How convenient, right? And then I'm also interested in finding the area HTML. So let's name it area HTML. And it's an H3. And we're going to extract HTML here because we're going to want to work with it after. And it looks empty. All right. I'm also going to try to find a summary. And that's going to be an H4. Let's see if we find it. We do have that. As a next step, I'm going to introduce a code block. So this code block is going to check if the area HTML was found. And if it is found, it would extract the area and the number of followers. However, in our case, this is not going to happen. So we are stuck with the data that we were already extracting. And that was the first lane. All right, so we are going to create another lane and we are going to extract the location. So creating an extract node and we are working from the locations from the previous step. And I'm still going to name it as locations. And let's target this div and I'm going to extract it as an array. So you can see here, we found one single location for this particular company. I'm going to create a new lane to process the About Us section. This is going to be a little bit more tricky. Bear with me, or ego with me. Feel free to check how LinkedIn structures its About Us section. You can open an incognito window, and then you can check any company page on LinkedIn. You have a description list. And we are going to target that. We are going to then extract the definition terms and definition data. So let's extract that. We are going to target definition lists divs. And we are going to extract the HTML and we want an array. So you can see here the extraction was successful. So let's move to the next step where we are going to split out all the items that we found. So we are splitting out all the definition items. 
We have seven items. And now we are going to process them one by one. So working from the definitions field, so the key is going to be the definition term and we are extracting text. Let's see how it works. You can see we found all the keys. That's great. Let's also find the values for these. So I'm going to target the definition data and then we are also going to extract it as a text. So you can see here we were able to extract all the keys and the values for each. And now let's create a code block and we are going to do some custom processing on the website. We want to clean the website because we, uh, we want to remove the referrer. So I'm pasting the code that I already made. So basically you can see that I am checking whether the key is the website. And in that case, I'm removing all the extra data on it. So we are stuck now with only the website, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Let's extract the employees. I'm going to create a new lane and with another extract HTML content node, we are targeting the employees field from the previous run. And I'm going to name this to employee. And we are extracting all the list items and we want the HTML content and we are returning it as an array. There we go. Now we have all the employees that were available on the company page. I'm going to create a split out node and you can see here now we have four employees to be processed. So let's process them one by one. I'm going to create an HTML node. We're going to target the employee field. And let's start with the name of the employee. That's going to be the H3 field. Then let's grab their title. It's going to be on the H4. And let's also grab their LinkedIn page, which will be available on the anchor tags, href attribute. Here we go. Let's run an aggregate at the end. I'm going to put all the items under the key employees. Let's test. Perfect. We are going to extract all the news items the company has on their company page. With an HTML node, we are going to target the updates field from the previous run. And let's find articles. We are going to extract an array of HTML content. After we have that, let's split out the articles. We have 10 articles. How nice. All right, let's process the articles one by one. Here we go with another HTML node. We need to target the article and let's extract the link of the article. I'm going to extract the href attribute. As you can see, we found them. Let's try to find the content of the article. How nice. We can also find the reshared content because sometimes LinkedIn articles are reposts. So we could technically find those. I can include it here so you can use it for your workflows if you want to. For our workflow, I don't think we are going to use it. I'm going to also select the time when this article was posted. You'll see that it shows the edited field. So I think I want to omit that. So I'm just going to omit the span inside. So now you can see that we only have the time. I prepared a very nice custom code block for processing the time. So what this does is very simple. It takes the string representation of the time and then it parses the date object and then it formats it to the right format. So if I run this, you can see that we created this posted at and we also removed the previous time field. So now we can work with this new and very nice date format.
Let's filter out everything that is older than three months. When you are reaching out to customers, you probably don't want to tell them that, oh, how nice your last Christmas campaign was, because it's already June. I'm going to add an expression where we are looking for all the dates. And as you can see that we are parsing from the posted at that we created, we are parsing an, uh, a date object. And we want to use the current date. We go back in time three months and turn it into seconds. So we compare these two seconds and we want to make sure that the post's date is newer than three months. You can see that we discarded an older one and indeed the post that date is older than three months. Let's finish our lane with a good old aggregate. We are going to merge everything under the updates here then you can see that now we have all the data under the update scheme now for the sake of time we're showing the last two lanes for products and affiliate pages already built here and these can be empty in many linkedin company pages so the if nodes that are used here will help to handle these empty cases be sure to check out the workflow to see all the details in the notes. All right, so now let's grab a merge node and we're gonna select combine by position and we have seven inputs. And then we'll connect every single lane over to our merge node. One by one, almost there. Ta-da! And you can see in our output, all the fields are merged together. Now that we have all the data from the company's LinkedIn page, what do we do with that data? Well, here's an example. Let's put together a summary of why this company is a good prospect for us. We'll start with an aggregate node, and this will allow us to use the data in an LLM. All right, to this, let's connect an LLM chain, require a specific output format, and I'll paste in my instructions as an expression. So here I'm instructing the LLM to create a summary and structure the message in the way that I want. After we connect our OpenAI chat model, we'll specify a structured output. And here you can see the properties for giving a company summary and explaining why the company is a good prospect based on the data that's available. If you test this out, here is our summary. Let's make this summary a little easier to read. And we're gonna use a Gmail node. And this will allow us to send a email with our summary of this company as a prospect. And this email can be sent to yourself, could be sent to a sales team, to your CEO, whatever you need for your workflow. Let's paste in this expression and this will summarize the data into my email body. Once you test it out, we can go over to our inbox. Ta-da! It's here. While we collected all the information within one single email, you can still customize it to your needs. You can create a CRM record, a database record, or even better, you can create a LinkedIn connection request. So be creative. Now, although we created this workflow with one item, again, for demo purposes, in the workflow that we upload for you, we'll transfer this to a loop add a wait time between each execution so you won't get flagged as a bot with all the scraping on LinkedIn. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to like and subscribe and see you in the next video.